the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa pays great attention and constant appreciation to the endeavors of the national cadres who are able to bear the responsibility of continuing government work and developing its outputs. The Prime Minister's Fellowship Program for the Development of Governmental Cadres is one of the most important programs implemented by the government, headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and with His Royal Highness's vision based on strengthening the Bahrain team and investing in the development of the Bahraini human element in all fields. The Prime Minister's Fellowship Program for the development of governmental cadres, which was launched with the vision of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, constitutes the real foundations for building and upgrading the society and an engine for its sustainability and keeping pace with the requirements of the next stage, especially in light of the acceleration of the technical development and the adoption of modern technology in all fields. This program reflects the keenness and interest of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in government cadres that work to achieve success for the country as a major part of the One Bahrain team in various projects to develop governmental performance, to achieve further growth and prosperity, and to achieve the goals of the Comprehensive Development Plan under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The Prime Minister's program for the development of governmental cadres is moving forward in achieving its objectives to raise the level of young national cadres professionally by subjecting in them to intensive, intensive training programs on methods of research, analysis and leadership to get acquainted closely with the mechanism of making and implementing government policies and programs through their work directly with a number of officials and industry makers. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, stressed that the Bahraini camel sport is moving towards further development and prosperity due to the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, as well as the interest and care it receives from the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness Sheikh Nasser indicated that the achievements of the Khatira and Akabr first and second places in the festival of His Royal Highness the Saudi Crown Prince is an indication of the successful march of the Bahraini camel sport in major international events in light of the wide participation enjoyed by this festival. His Highness Sheikh Nasser expressed happiness with these positive results that shall be a motivation for further Bahraini achievements in upcoming participations. The Kingdom of Bahrain is set to host the Gender Equity Seminar on October the 30th and 31st. The seminar is organized by the Olympic Council of Asia in cooperation with the Bahrain Olympic Committee and the International Olympic Committee. The first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of the General Sports Authority, President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa expressed pride in the designation of the Kingdom as hosts of the seminar, which embodies Bahrain's ongoing keenness to strengthen the role of women in the sports field. His Highness Sheikh Khalid asserted that Bahrain has made major strides in achieving gender equality, citing its consolidation of women's presence in all aspects of sports work, adding that the event reflects BOC's keenness to exchange expertise and experiences with Asian NOCs, which makes Bahrain a center for promoting the gender equity culture in the sports field. His Honor Sheikh Khalid indicated that the seminar will attract a group of prominent international speakers from OCA, OIC and Asian NOCs, noting that it is in line with IOC's strategic roadmap, Olympic Agenda 2020 plus 5, and its specific gender equality target to strive for gender balance and leadership with a minimum of 30% representation of either gender. His Honor Sheikh Khalid paid tribute to the OCA for its support for gender equality in Asian NOCs, commending the efforts exerted by OCA Director General Hussein Al Musallam and OCA's Gender Equity Committee Chairperson Sheikh Hayat, Hayat bin Abdulaziz Al Khalifa to hold the international event in Bahrain. His Honor Sheikh Khalid instructed BOC to prepare well for the international seminar set to be held in the kingdom for the first time, wishing the participants every success in coming up with recommendations and results that would contribute to strengthening gender equality. 
The Bahrain Polytechnic College and the Bahrain Training Institute discuss in coordination with the Ministry of Education the transitional plan for BTI, including the new academic, administrative and financial procedures. The move follows the issuance of Royal Decree 46 of 2022 by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa on transferring the affiliation of BTI to Bahrain Polytechnic, marking the occasion Education Minister and the Minister responsible for supervising and controlling the work of the Bahrain Polytechnic, Dr. Majid bin Ali Naimi, stated that the issuance of the Royal Decree is within the strategy to develop education and training in the kingdom. The minister praised the unlimited support of His Majesty King Hamad and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad to the education sector in Bahrain. The Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs organized the final session for the winners of the Voice of Youth 2030 elections in cooperation with the Youth Committee of the Supreme Council for Women, the Temkin Labor Fund, the House of Representatives, the Legislation and Legal Opinion Commission, and the Bahrain Institute for Political Development. The final session came as a simulation of the reality of the work of the members of Parliament and Municipal Council in the presence of Acting Undersecretary of the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs, Sarah Ishaq, after completing the training program for the winners to get acquainted with the basics of this session its standards and the way to manage it. The agenda focused on development proposals for the Youth City 2030 for the coming years and the city's needs that keep pace with its development process and city programs. A military delegation from the United Arab Emirates received its U.S. counterpart to discuss defense affairs on Friday. The two sides met to ensure more coordination in defense fields and discuss means to further develop friendly ties. The meeting was held between Commander of the Naval Forces Rear Admiral Pilot Sheikh Saeed bin Hamdan bin Mohammed Al Hayyan and Commander of the U.S. Naval Forces Central Command Vice Admiral Brad Cooper. Earlier in August, the Pentagon authorized a proposed UA request by to buy TAD missiles rounds. The sale would support U.S. national security interests and improve the security of an important regional partner, the Pentagon said. The U.S. and UAE historically share a strong relationship in various fields, including technology, space and, importantly, defense. The Saudi naval vessel HMS Al Jubail arrived at the King Faisal naval base in the Western Fleet in the presence of Saudi Chief of General Staff Lieutenant General Fayyad bin Hamid Al Rouheli. The Royal Saudi Naval Forces held an official reception for the ship, which arrived after being manufactured in Spain by Navantia. The CEO of Saudi Arabian Military Industries, Walid bin Abdul Majid Abu Khalid, said the arrival of HMS Jabail emphasizes Saudi Arabian military industry's Sami's progress in reaching its goal of supporting the localization of 50% of military spending by 2030. It is the first ship to enter service as part of Sarawat project, which includes the manufacture and construction of five naval vessels with advanced capabilities. The Avant a 2200 class Corvette has capabilities to handle air, surface, or subsurface targets. Intense fighting erupted in the Libyan capital overnight and lasted into Saturday morning with rival factions exchanging heavy gunfire and the sounds of several loud blasts ricocheting around the city. The clashes took place in Tripoli's city center after one of the capital's strongest groups assaulted the base of a rival force leading to hours of shooting that killed one civilian and injured five others and raised fears of a wider escalation. It was not clear whether the fighting was directly linked to Libya's wider political standoff over control of the government, but any clashes between powerful Tripoli groups could risk drawing in other factions. Meanwhile, a military convoy affiliated with a parliament-backed administration of Fethi Bashaka was heading towards Tripoli from Zlitan near Misrata. An international light festival has opened in Gatchina, Russia, under the theme Dialogue. The show opened with one organizer emphasizing the importance of communication between different people and different ways of understanding the world. The dazzling light show that opened near St. Petersburg is now in its fourth year. Organizers say the festival is a platform for uniting the best creative forces in the field of light arts. Artists from Russia, Belarus and Lebanon are demonstrating 30 video projections created with light and innovative technologies, including a 30-meter lighthouse and a bridge. The artists taking part are largely made up of designers, architects and engineers. The show called Light Nights opened on Thursday, August the 25th and will run until Saturday, August the 27th.